and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use the IBM Watson Discovery Service uh, in Bluemix and so let's begin. So today we're going to be creating, a, we're going to be using the Discovery Service in order to create something called, uh, or at least I like to call it, a Tanmay search. So let me actually begin by describing what this will do. Or uh, actually, let me begin by describing the discovery service itself. So to begin, I actually just recently found out about a new service that the guys over at Watson released. Uh, and it's a new data insight service for IBM Watson. Uh, and it's a service called Discovery. Now it's currently in experimental, not even beta yet, it's experimental. Uh, so there are a few uh, rough patches that they're still trying to work around, but it is publicly available on Bluemix. Uh, if you go to the catalog, you won't be able to see it yet. You're gonna have to go to the labs catalog and I'll tell you how to do that in the Mac part. However, essentially this discovery service is very, very neat. Let me actually show you what this does. So, oh, I dropped my marker. So uh, let's actually begin by uh, actually seeing what this does. So let's say we've got uh, our discovery service here, right? We've got uh, discover, uh, sorry, discovery. Okay, so this is our discovery service. And let's say we've got some data, right? And so we've got a few HTML files, for example. So we've got one.html, we've got two.html, and let's say we've got also 3.html. Now in practice, you actually have hundreds upon thousands of these HTML documents, and you would take this as your corpus of knowledge or corpus of data, and you'd feed this into discovery. All right. And once you have all of your HTML files in discovery, what's going to happen is discovery is going to index through them. And it's going to, you know, organize itself and uh, understand these documents. And then you should be able to give it a query. And so let's say that our data was about me, right? And so what I've done is I've created a Python script that actually goes to Google uh, using a Google API of the Google Custom Search uh, East API. It'll use that API and what it's going to do is it's actually going to grab a hundred HTML documents from Google about me, sort of like articles that contain the words Tanmay Bakshi. And so once we have around a hundred of those documents, uh, we're going to feed them right into Discovery. Uh, and once Discovery has those hundred documents and once it indexes through them, which takes very, very little time, uh, then we can actually give it a query like, um, this is, these are quotes. Uh, when did Tanmay start coding? All right. So let's just say we give it. When did Tanmay start coding? Uh, or you know, uh, we could actually. <laughs> all right, that's a bit better. So what happens is we're going to give it a query. All right, and this query could be anything. Uh, in fact, it couldn't just be about that. It could be about my summer training. But let's just say, for the sake of simplicity, that we say, when did Tanmay start coding? Okay. So this is our query, right? And we send it into Discovery. What's going to happen in Discovery is then going to take all of these documents that we give it, and it's going to order these documents from most relevant to least relevant, and it's going to give us the most relevant documents that are related to this um, query. So let's just say that this is the order just coincidentally descending, or coincidentally 2, 3, 1. Uh, it could really be whatever. Um, and so what re what's happening here is, let's say two is the most relevant to this query, uh, and two contains a paragraph in it that says Tan may started coding at five years old. What would happen is it would re realize that that's the most relevant, and it would bring it to the top. Now, something really remarkable about Discovery is that, well, don't all search engines do this? Well, no, Discovery is different. It's different in the way that even if it doesn't say that Tanmay Bakshi started coding at five years old, but it says, let's say, uh, Tanmay Bakshi is currently 12 years old. Uh, he has built applications with IBM Watson, and he started coding at five years old, or he began to code at five years old. It would still understand, because of that, you know, it knows that, it knows the context, it would still understand that it's very, very relevant 
to when did Tanmay start coding because of the sentence or the paragraph's context. And so, of course, that's what discovery is going to help us achieve today. And so, without any further ado, let's head right over to the Mac part now, where I'm going to be showing you how you can use this new discovery cervix in Bluemix. Uh, and so, of course, uh, we're going to be, of course, as I said, using that Python script in order to download a hundred documents uh, of really anything. In this case, I've said Tanmay Bakshi. Uh, we're going to feed those into discovery. We're going to then give discovery one of our queries, and discovery should then give us uh, results uh, ordered uh, by relevance. Now, another thing pretty interesting here is that, well, while I haven't created an iOS app just yet, you will see that in the next part. So in the next part of this discovery service video series, I'm going to be showing you how you can implement this using its JSON REST API with Swift in order to create an iOS application where you can type in your query, click send, and you'll see a UI table view with lots of these results that you can just scroll through as you wish. All right. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get to the Mac part now, shall we? So now let's begin the part where we essentially go to Google and grab a lot of data to actually feed into Discovery. So let's begin. Uh, as you can see over here, if I open up Finder, uh, I've got this folder here. Uh, and as you can see, I've got 100 HTML files. And these HTML files uh, essentially contain, well, quite simply, if I just uh, click space on one of them, uh, as you can see over here, it just shows me a lot of text. Uh, and this text uh, is a essentially just, you know, uh, the uh, sort of uh, the content of the Google document that we are extracting. So what we do uh, is we take a document from Google, uh, we take the link from that, uh, and then we send that over to Alchemy Language. And Alchemy Language extracts a lot of text uh, from that link, and then that text is put into an HTML file along with the title. Uh, and so if I just show you, as you can see, that we have a lot of these HTML files. Uh, about me okay and so essentially uh, that is what we're going to be using as our corpus. But in order to actually grab all of that data, I've created a very simple Python script, uh, which if I show you over here, it's called scrape.py. Uh, and so what it does is just uh, imports URL, lib, JSON, and sleep from time. And then it creates a lot of URLs. And these URLs essentially uh, have uh, lots of Google search uh, queries. Here, as you can see, uh, I'm using the Google Custom Search Engine API. Uh, and I'm searching about me on the entire internet uh, 10 times and each time I get 10 results uh, 10 times 10 that's 100 so we're getting 100 final results uh, and of course, if you see over here, I'm using another parameter. Uh, apart from just the query being Tanmay Bakshi over here, I'm also setting the exact terms to Tanmay. So if it doesn't contain the word Tanmay, it won't give me that article back or it won't give me that uh, URL back uh, so that we only have, uh, you know, uh, search results uh, that contain my name. So it's actually very relevant. Uh, once that's done, I just, uh, of course, uh, open up all those URLs, and once we open up all those URLs and read string values from them, uh, we load those into JSON. Once we have those as JSON values, uh, we don't need this line of code anymore, then we put that all into an array of JSON responses, uh, and then we create a new blank array, or list in Python, uh, which, is, which is called results. And I say done is equal to zero, and this signifies how many documents were currently done. And then I loop through all those JSON responses and then have a lot of, uh, you know, just a little algorithm, or not algorithm necessarily, but a little script here that'll essentially uh, take uh, that JSON, it'll extract the link, you know, the title, all that sort of stuff from the, uh, from the Google search query. Uh, and of course, it'll finally give us uh, all, all the results in HTML files, and it'll save them, of course, as well. 
Now, of course, I will be having much more detailed documentation about how you can actually use this script, not only use it, uh, but how you can, you know, how it works, that type of thing, on GitHub. So this will be as a separate GitHub, this will be on a separate GitHub repository, uh, which will be in the description below. And that is how we garner our data or sort of, you know, scrape out our data uh, from Google in order to use with this application. And so next, though, um, uh, I will be showing you the next step of the process, which is, of course, actually taking this data and feeding it into discovery. So let's get right into that part now. All right, so now let's see how we can actually create a new data collection and insert our new HTML data that we grabbed off of Google. So let's begin with going back to our discovery tooling and clicking on create a data collection. Once you're at the screen, type in a new data collection name. In this case, I'll call it Tanme. Once you're done, make sure that you keep the default configuration. This is for simplicity for now, but in a future video we can always see how we can create our own configuration with discovery. Alright, so now click the create button. And in just a moment, Watson Discovery Tooling will show you that you have created your own collection. Once you've got this collection, you can now put in your data. And in order to do that, we, we very simply need to click on the drag or drop your documents here or browse from computer button. Click on that and it'll show this little uh, file selector view. And then you need to go to the directory where you have stored all of your HTML files. I'm already here, so I'll select all of my HTML files, click on the open button, and wait for it to upload most of the documents. Now, this might take a second or two, uh, because the internet's uh, probably uploading them, uh, and so since it, um, it might take a few seconds, but as you can see, 60 documents were able to successfully get uploaded, and that is how you can actually feed your data into IBM Watson Discovery Service using that discovery tooling. And of course, uh, this might take some time. It'll, uh, of course, uh, increase the number of documents that are available. Uh, and so next, though, even while it does that, we can still query this discovery service. And so now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually query the discovery service. Let's get to it. Alright, so now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually query this new discovery collection that you have created. Alright, so let's begin here. Now, as you can see, uh, what you would start off with is a screen like so. Uh, a screen like this one, uh, where you can see uh, a kind of, if I just uh, change this here. So, you can see your data, Tanmate, which is the collection that I have created. And towards the right, you'll see a button called Query This Collection. Now, if I click on this button, then in just a second, you should see that. All right, as you can see, uh, it, it tells me to, it gives me a few options of what I can do. And as you can see, first it gives me enter a query or keyword. And this is sort of where I can build my query. So, of course, let's say I wanted to ask the Watson Discovery Service, when did Tamay start coding? Okay, now I won't send this query just yet, but I'm going to tell it though to return 10 results. I'm going to give it no filter, no aggregation, and no offset either. And I'm going to tell it to return all fields. In a different video, I'll be telling you exactly what all of this means, but in case you were wondering, there will be a link to the documentation of the service down below as well. Now, let's say I click on the Run Query button. In just a second, towards the right, you can see the results. And it's currently loading, but right as it gets a result, or it gets the results from Discovery, it gives it to us. And let's take a look at the top result. So the title here is Meet 12-Year-Old Tammy Bakshi, a software developer, author, and dot dot dot. Now let's actually take a look at the text of this article or uh, Google search result. As you can see, it says, me, 12-year-old Tammy Bakshi, a software developer, etc., etc., etc. Me, Tammy Bakshi, an Indian origin preteen from Brampton, Canada, who started... Co okay, as you can see, it says, me, Tammy Bakshi, an Indian origin preteen from Brampton, Canada, who started coding when he was just five years old. 
okay? Now, this sentence has a lot of twists and turns, and it gives you a lot of different information. It tells you that my name's Hame Bakshi, I'm a preteen from India, or I originate from India, I currently live in Brandon, Canada, and I started coding when I was five years old. And the gap, or the gap between the two phrases, meet Tamay Bakshi, and he started coding when he was five years old, is absolutely huge, and the stuff that came between it, that's a lot of information. But what Watson Discovery does, is it doesn't do a word search. That is usually what would happen with some sort of search engine, it would look for Tanmay started coding at five years old. However, with that live game Watson Discovery, it's looking for the same context and really anything that's related to when did Tanmay start coding. For example, it would prioritize a document that talked about I created my first app at nine years old. And that may not necessarily contain that I'm fi that I started coding at five years old, but it, although uh, if a document does contain that, that'll be ranked highest. But let's just say that another document doesn't have that, but it does have I started uh, I created my first iOS app at nine. It would rank that document higher than a document that highlighted for for example, let's say my summer training with IBM. And so it's trying to find documents that are more contextually related to your query so that you get much more relevant results. And of course, if we were to give this time some time, this service some time to actually index uh, and of course uh, optimize itself, it would become even better. If we were to put in more documents and give it more time, uh, I really do believe that this could actually be great uh, for a sort of cognitive search engine, I guess you could say. All right, though, uh, that's actually going to be it for this video, though. But if you'd like to see how you can create an iOS application with all of this new stuff that you just learned about the IBM Watson Discovery Service, please do tune in to part two of this video series where I'm going to be showing you, as I said, how you can create an iOS application to list out discovery uh, results in a UI table view with a query given to you on the screen. All right, though, but that's going to be it for this video. Of course, if you really did enjoy this video, uh, please do make sure to leave a like down below. But if you think this could help anyone else you know, then please do consider sharing the video as well. Of course, if you have any suggestions, feedback, or uh, comments or questions, uh, please do consider leaving that down in the comments below, emailing it to me at tajimani at gmail.com, or tweeting it to me at tajimani. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to my channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. But anyway, though, that's going to be it for this tutorial today. Thank you very much. Goodbye.